Okay, so I mentioned that I would do a very basic friction problem so you can see what a three, I get a two force problem looks like when the forces are busted up into components. We were looking at the intuition of what is the friction force and what is the normal force on a something that's on a body and I'm going to do it first in 2D and then I'll show you some of the 3D sketchy physics stuff so you can apply it in something else and so what you got to realize is I'm going to draft this first by looking at it sideways here and so I'm in the SketchUp and I'm going to kind of do and make myself a nice plane here and sometimes that nice plane is a box and I'm going to go ahead and push it out again you're going to do this by hand you know, you've done it in the past, and I'm going to now just go to this point talking about the layout of I'm going to take this, I'm going to go ahead and do that 15 degrees by grabbing, going to the rotate, holding my shift key to hold that, clicking once, and then saying with the control key, 15 degrees. I've got something 15 there, and so in reality, I'm going to, there's all kinds of different ways to go about doing this, but very often in this program, you're going to grab, I'm just going to make the box this way because the perpendicularity looks a little different. I'm going to take this, hit a control key. I'm just going to offset by moving up. Right. I'm going to go ahead and take this. Unfortunately, I guess I can take this and I'm going to go here, hold the shift key, go from here to there. Hold the control key as the key. I'm turning it 90 degrees. Right. Now I've got something there and I'm going to take my box here once again holding the control key once and I'm going to take that box down and then the control key once again and I got that box there and so now I can start erasing things because I don't need them this is not so tough though it's weird when you're used to doing it in AutoCAD and there are more, more efficient ways to do it however what we wanted was basically a box that looks something like that start talking about the free body acting down etc so that basically is the ramp with a 15 degree boy it doesn't look like that to me but you can go ahead and measure it here I go to here there back here and then that measures at 15 degrees and I'm fine so the point of this was to be adding vectors so I'm going to talk about here going out from here to there and getting the centroid I'm just going to assume that I can now get a vector that acts down so I'm going to go ahead and notice this. I'm going to call that my gravity vector down, acting down. All right, so that is one direction. I now have to get a vector acting up, albeit I don't know that this is in the right direction. I'm going to move that to there, and that vector over here is acting in that direction. So this is the, the blue one there is the um, direction of the normal vector. That is the direction of the friction vector and that is the direction of the mass vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now move off to the side because if you realize that this is a two force system or a three force system in either case the forces need to be concurrent. They must be otherwise you would not have static equilibrium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that vector here. I'm going to move it off to the side and I'm going to say that that again control is copy. So I know that is my zero point right there and now I'm going to show those other two vectors emanating from so I'm going to grab that usually hitting the control with this program so that vector is going to go in that direction and this vector here is going to go in this direction now it is probably best to really think about those not in terms of those being shown like they are but perhaps just by putting in a visually putting in a direction there so that's a known direction and this is 90 degrees to it that's a known direction and now you kinda get a better visual that you know you are here and you've got to get back to there along those two right along those two directions and so you're at the end here and you need to go back along this direction so what you can do now is take that direction I'm hitting the control key and the move tool. I'm going to go from there to there, which now means I can draw my vector from there to there and draw my vector from there to there. 
So that's in fact how you solve it graphically. What you'll see now is that you've got this 15 degrees right there, believe it or not. And then this is the MG. I'll put those things on there if I can. I'm going to tell you this here is, do it again. That vector is mass times gravity or mass times acceleration constant. That's that. This one here is mg times the cosine of theta, in this case 15 degrees. And that one is going to be mg times the sine of 15 degrees. And there you have it. So what I want to point out is a problem like this is solved by knowing that it's a two-force or three-force system. And the reality then we know is the contact force actually has to be acting right here, right at that point. I'm going to put a little circle there because if it's a two-force system, right, those forces have to be in line. So that contact force is actually acting right there. So the reality is that force is not right there. It is, in fact, right there. And at the same time, there's also another force right there. Uh, let's see, is that true? It's acting down, so that normal force is there, and this other one is right through there. So this, the, the point of concurrency then is that point of contact. It's not right there. And you have, in fact, hey, you have some torques going on as well. So now let's see what this looks like if we kind of take it into sketchy physics. So I want to point this out, but what I want to show is this fact of going and doing the sliding of the vectors over and over again on this problem as you start rotating it back and forth will get you to a point where you might kind of get more of this than you think. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this right now. I'm going to keep that around. I'm going to go ahead and now go into sketchy physics and draft a box. And I'm going to push that box up. And now I'm going to take that box, right click, make it a component. Make it a component. Create it. And now I'm going to right click and say sketchy physics this is a box at the same time I'm gonna go in and put a floor on this and you're not seeing the buttons I'm hitting but I'm gonna go ahead and put a floor on the world alright and get rid of those things edit undo so I've got those I'm kinda of doing a edit erase or edit copy now I'm gonna rotate this floor and the box by 15 degrees and when I turn it on I can decide and figure out what is the coefficient of friction that this program is using because the coefficient of friction is equal to the tangent of the angle at which this thing starts to slide so when I turn that on it doesn't slide go back here grab them both. I'm going to now turn them another 15 degrees. Turn it the other way. Interesting program in that it takes the, your hint on what is right, what is up and you turn it on here. I'm going to turn on sketchy physics. You notice there the coefficient of friction is still not been exceeded. I'm going to take this. I'm going to double check that when I turn this on it does run. Yep, it does work. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to turn it again 15 more degrees. Take this here, do the rotate, turn it here 15 more degrees. And now we're going to see it probably will start to slide. There it is. So it's obviously somewhat less than that. Later on, you can see that you can play around with this in other ways to get the exact number. And most programs would then have a setting. I'm going to go down five degrees. Turn this on. So someplace right between 40 and 45 degrees is where the, at least in terms of this, I'm going to go ahead and measure that. Sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and measure this and about 40 degrees. So the tangent 
of 40 degrees is about the coefficient of friction that we do here. That's 10 minutes. We'll do that problem over and over and over again. What you can get is some, in, you can get some intu intuition that when the angle of theta is zero, the friction force is zero, and therefore it, the normal force would be mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the cosine of the angle from the horizontal. Thanks for listening.